Hey folks, my name is Kyle Lamb with Viking Tactics and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the installation of the Viking Tactics sling. Now, the installation of most of our slings is the same and the issues that we hear from some customers is how they retrace back through the tri-glides and attach heavy-duty quick detaches, sling swivels, or to the buttstock of your rifle. So I'm going to go through those today so you have a better understanding of how that actually works. Okay, so when you take your sling out of the bag, it'll be rolled up like such. The first thing that I do is I disconnect the rear of the sling, just untrace that portion of the sling until you have a free running end that looks like this. Now you can adjust these buckles wherever you want, but I'm going to show you this kind of how I do this so that uh, if you want to put a heavy duty quick detach on, what you're going to do. So I put the heavy duty quick detach on the sling like such. Then I take the sling, the, the uh, tail end of this sling, and I go back up through that tri-glide, back through again, go to the next one, I go through, and I go through one more time. So right there you would be fine. If you wanted to roll with that, that would be fine. But what I do is I actually go back through the tri-glide one more time, and I do that by just tracing back on that tri-glide like such and what that does is it actually locks that into place. This isn't going to slide if these uh, Mark II slings are standard or are hybrid slings but it's just something I like to do. It also gives you a little bit smoother area of the tail of that sling. So now we've got that installed. If you wanted to you could retrace that even farther. Okay so now we take the front of the sling <clears throat> and these slings are made intentionally long so you may have a little bit more material here than you need. I undo that end of the sling out of the tri-glide so you just have two tri-glides on the sling. Take your heavy duty quick detach, slide that onto the sling so it looks something like like such. So now we have our tri-glides and our heavy duty quick detach attached there. Once again go through the tri-glide like such. Again, and you can go the opposite way if you want, but it's really a pain in the butt to do that, so that's why I go on the back side, and it keeps all of the, uh, the rough edges away from your neck, away from your body here. So once again, I went through there. I go back on itself like such to lock it, so now I've, I've uh, went 180 out from the direction I was going, and I pull that down tight and that's locked in place. That's what it should look like. One of the other slings that we have is called the upgrade sling. So the upgrade sling, when you pull it out of the package, it actually has covers over the keeper. So what you've got to do is take that cover, slide it off of the keeper, which exposes a metal tri-glide. So these have metal tri-glides are a little bit stronger than the plastic. Well, they're significantly stronger than the plastic. Slide that where you want it. We're going to say that we need it right there. We're going to take our heavy duty quick detach, slide it onto the sling like such. Remember, this is how it came straight out of the bag. Go through one time, go through the second time, and then to lock it in place, once again, we're going to take that tri-glide, give ourselves some room, and lock that sling into place. And now you can see we've got extra material here. You can cut and burn this, or I'll show you one in a second where I've taped it down so you kind of see what it looks like. That is what it would look like if you have a upgrade sling, and that's the shoulder portion nearest you. Front of the sling, we're going to do the same, same thing. Okay, this is a sling that I took off of one of my rifles that I use all the time. Actually, I took it off this rifle right here. This is actually one of our hybrid slings. So the hybrid sling, it still has the two buckles at the rear, and you can see that's how I use mine. I've got it cinched very tightly, and then I've cut that down and I've burned it. That way I don't have to worry about it uh, fraying or anything. And you can see I keep a nice, tight, clean package there. On the front, what I've done is I've attached a heavy-duty quick detach. And then I've taken the excess material and I could have cut and burned that, but instead I actually taped it because you never know when you might need a little bit of more material in the front. Sometimes if you're operating in a winter environment, you may have more clothes on. 
you may need to do that. But I've just taken a, a strip of Gorilla Tape and I've taped that into place just like that. So to attach this sling to the rifle, one of the things that I commonly see is when folks want to attach to the rear, they attach on the same side as, uh, as they are from the rifle. I actually like to attach to the opposite side of the rifle, if I can, like such. Take that sling, I make sure it's not twisted, and then I hook to the front, which I have a low profile sling mount attached here. Attached, I'm good to go, there's no twist. So now when I put this sling on, I'm able to, in one, one pull, I can get that sling as tight as I would ever want it. That's, that's tighter than I would need it. But when I have it fully extended, I have the capability of going from my strong to my support side shoulder simply by dropping my support arm through the sling, grabbing the front of the magwell, pushing that weapon forward, and then handing it to the opposite side. And as you can see what happens, this is why I attach it the way I do. Because now, it's not choking me out, it gives me a little bit of extra play. So I attach it right hand side of the weapon for a right handed shooter. That way it doesn't choke me out when I go to my support side. Left handed side for a left handed shooter, same thing, it, it uh, gives you that extra space that you need. One of the other things that's nice about having a heavy duty quick detach on both ends of the rifle is if I'm going to get in a vehicle, if you really wanted to, you could disconnect your sling. I normally use a rubber band and just rubber band my sling to my buttstock, but if you wanted to, you could actually remove your sling. So if you decided you want to attach the sling to the rear of your buttstock, but you don't want to HDQD, there's a couple tricks for doing this. So what I like to do is I'll take that sling, it's going to look something like this when you pull it out of the package. It's going to be, this is going to be doubled over. You'll undo that, so you've got two tri-glides and you've got the free running end. Then I take that free running end and I go to the right side of the weapon, come under and go around the buttstock. Don't start on the, right, on the left side and go through, start on the right side and come through and around. There's a reason for that. Then I take this and I pull it tight, as you can see there. Don't only go through this little loop. If you do that, that breaks or cracks. Good chance you could lose your weapon and we definitely don't want that to happen. So once I'm in this location, I take the sling, route it the same way that you would if you were just putting HDQD on it. So it's gonna look something like this. And I can go back through and lock those in place just like we showed you earlier in the video. Actually, I'll do that on one of these so you see what I'm talking about. Like such. Take that sling, make sure that it's not twisted, hook it into my low profile sling mount at the front of the weapon, like such. And I put the sling on. Now what this allows you to do is when I make that transition by dropping my support arm through and I grab the front of the magwell, push that weapon forward, as I come to this side of the weapon, it untwists itself so I'm not choking myself out. I come up on the target, shooting support side, now I want to switch back, I grab it the front of the magwell, I push the gun away from me and I go back to my strong side and as you can see what happens, it slid there, but as soon as I let that weapon hang or I tighten up my sling, you can see where this ends up. So it allows it to slide down and slide right back up into position. If you decide to not use a heavy duty quick detach, you want to use a, a standard sling swivel. So if you're going to use a standard swivel like this, like you would on some hunting rifles, uh, maybe even on your AR you would use that. We'll just undo the sling again. Once again, this is how it'll come in the package. Once that's undone, add the sling swivel. It's going to look something like this. Now simply retrace through the tri-glides. Like such. And then I take that free running end again and I go back through the tri-glide to lock it into place. You don't have to do that, but I really like, one, I like how that looks and I like how it feels because it locks everything into place. So once you have this uh, swivel connected, 
of course, just undo the swivel. Like such. Once you have that sling swivel mounted on your sling like such, just slide it onto the rifle. And you're in business there. If you decide you want to use one of our slings on a standard hunting rifle, but you want to have the padded portion in the rear just like you do on your AR, what I do there is I pull out a buttstock adapter. It's going to look like this when you pull it out of the package. Just disconnect the Velcro end, take this and run it around your buttstock. You're going to have this piece on the back that holds it in place so it doesn't slide forward. Then I simply take this, run it through a ladder lock like such. And then the tricky part with this is getting this free running end back through the buckle. So push it down through the buckle. Once you can get a hold of it, just pull it tight. And at that point, I'm going to take the rifle position that about where I want it, and then I'm just going to keep working this until I get it as tight as I want it. Right there, that's actually really tight on that stock. At that point, you have the free running end. It has Velcro on it. Just take the Velcro, attach it. You still have access to your sling swivel if you want to use it, if you want to turn the sling around. And then for the, the padded portion, I bring that to the rear of the weapon. I take the free running end and I run it through the D-ring at the top of the buttstock adapter and then simply run it back on itself as though I put a heavy duty quick detach on that, uh, on that end of the sling. And at that point, we're connected in the rear and we're connected in the front. If you want to carry this muzzle down, this is the way to go. So once you have the buttstock adapter in place, it'll look something like this. I've got the padded portion of the sling to the rear, and you can tighten this down closer if you want. You can retrace like I showed you to lock it in place. Once it's squared away, put that over your right shoulder, under your left arm, cinch it down, and now we can carry our rifle to the front of our body, and it still allows us to get up on target very quickly. Gives you that hands-free capability if you're out in the field, whether you're calling elk, you're using your binos, whatever it might be, it gives you the ability to go hands-free, yet have instant access to your rifle. All right, folks, that's the Viking Tactics two-point sling attachment video. I hope that you guys learned something there. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at vikingtactics.com. And thanks again for being a customer. We really appreciate that. And we'll see you on the range.